I think that chamber music is one of the most easily appreciated forms of music. When you can hear it up close as you can in this room, whether you've heard it a thousand times or it's your first time, I think it will make a big impression. Our quartet enjoys being spontaneous. What's great about being in a space like this is that you have the added acoustic and interaction with the audience that puts an element of uncertainty <laughs> into the performance and it's exciting because I can really tell that everyone's listening to each other and to the room and to the audience all at once. It's kind of, kind of cool. You know, we seat about 100, 105 people in that room, so it's really quite intimate. We get anywhere from two to three times the number of um, you know, requests and there are seats available. So. I think that it's important that there be um, on offer high culture that doesn't come with a correspondingly high price tag. And so this is really music of the highest caliber and we want to make it accessible to a wide audience. So when we decided to run a chamber music series, we didn't have a lot of money. We still don't have a lot of money. We have a limited budget. So our choice was we're going to find the very finest young groups of people who are just beginning to make a name for themselves and also cultivate very well-established European groups who have not made a name for themselves in the United States. Needless to say, the Clark Library is an incredibly intimate place to play. And since String quartets especially are sort of composed on this scale of human conversation. It, it just makes such sense. You feel such contact with the audience. And of course, since it's so hard to get a seat in the audience here too, that makes the atmosphere even more special because everybody is so excited to be here. The room here is built on a model taken from the Doge's Palace in Venice. And the reason, if you look at all of it on top, you'll see that all of these nooks and crannies make it such that it is a wonderful music room because you have the sound bouncing off everything else. And when the music starts, I, my eye flits to the paintings that I've seen for 10 years coming, and I feel at ease and comfortable and in a familiar situation and it adds to my delight of the music. The acoustics, the setting, it all contributes to just a fantastic program. And the music is just transformative. When you get to a movement its conclusion, you hear people kind of let out a breath and you get a kind of like, Oh. And that's typical. Yeah, that's real typical. It's amazing to me how many friends the Chamber Music Series has brought to the library. I mean, people feel very passionately about this. They feel very passionately about supporting the concerts, about supporting music at the Clark. I also think that it honors Clark's legacy um, in a way that's, that's quite authentic. Mr. Clark Jr. was the person who founded the L.A. Philharmonic. And Clark himself was an extremely fine violinist who made sure that when, his, when this uh, building was built that the hall, the major hall, would be a, a hall for music. So I thought it's time to bring music back to the Clark because in many ways the gift that Clark gave to L.A was a gift of music as well as a gift of books. Oh, it's, it's very important to me that um, not just the concert series, but that the Clark in general remain as accessible and public as possible. I mean, this is a place that was left to the people of Los Angeles and, you know, we are its stewards. We're also interested in, in developing younger audiences. This is something that both the musicians and the current audience feel very strongly about. Clark is, I think, increasingly become known to connoisseurs of fine music. 
probably will never get as famous as the Library of Congress series, but it will be one of the top series in the United States, I think, in reputation. I believe it is already in reality.